Hey guys, Zekt here and welcome to my new video. Today we have the DK rework on Global Labs and since like the last videos I kind of just try to figure out what got changed. I um, will try to bring people into the streams that actually have knowledge about the class and played the class for a long time. So with that being said, um, I have a guest here today and that's Palunace. Um Palu was... I, I would say he was born as a DK and he always played DK and uh, he will definitely can say you, tell you guys if the rework is good so far. Probably want to say hello. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, the, uh, Palu, Palu always has been in, uh, in my guild and a proper friend of mine. So um, yeah, Palu, um, nice to have you here today and we go over the DK changes. So first of all, um, how do you like the changes that you saw so far, just uh, in general? Like, is it good or not good? Yeah. Um, so, the changes to DK on Glabs, a lot of it was really good changes that DK needed as a whole. There is a lot of things that was requested and was left unaddressed. So, I think there is a lot more work that can and should be done. But I think the changes that we got were generally quite good. So that, that's nice to hear. Um, at the moment, do you think DK is in a good state on console? Um, overall, DK is fairly balanced. He's not broken or anything, which does mean he somewhat lags behind the other classes in performance, but it's not um, terrible. If you play her well and work with what she got, she's got, you can do very well with her. You just generally have to put in a lot more effort than people who are playing other classes. Okay, so we can start. Um, I think we start with the Awaken kit, and uh, mm -hmm. we are already in Awakening. And um, we are also on G Labs in the controller mode. So, and in, 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 on in Global Labs, we actually have a um, option to get the completely uh, the complete console overlay. So, I'm also with him with my controller. So, we will um, go for controller inputs. Everything you see, you are also able to do with the controller. Um, so, Pano, tell me what got changed for Awakening. What do you want to showcase first? Um, so I think probably one of the biggest changes, um, that's probably easiest to approach, is the change to Seed and its flow. So the cooldowns got changed. Seed, um, was 9 seconds before, has now got reduced to 8. And its flow, which was 11 seconds before, is now reduced to 8.5. And its flow got super armor as well. So that is actually a really, really good change. Not only is it syncing up the cooldowns more, which is incredibly nice because they often fell out of sync if you were using on cooldown. Um, but the super armor on the flow basically means the core of seed, the core skill for seed, which adds super armor to seed, is now a lot. Well, it was good before, but now it's a lot more useful. Um, and it's just that added bit of protection and over DPS that will be very, very useful. DK gameplay. Yeah, I can already see that. Also, with yeah. the, did you saw? Did you mention the core skill already? The yes, flavor, the, the, core yeah, skill. the core skill on seed adds super armor to it. It was useful before, but it had a small gap at the end. Um, but now that the flow actually has super armor as well, it covers that gap and it makes the overall seed much more useful. Yeah, as you can see here, like this. Everything is super armored now. That's really nice. So uh, seed got changed. Really nice changes to seed. More viable with protection and like the flow has slower cooldown. It's roughly the same as normal seed now. So you can probably use this, this both skills at the same time all the time. So um, what's the next thing you want to showcase? Um, so I think probably those that must the preview. They, this was quite noticeable because it was quite different. Um, cluster of Despair was changed rather significantly in this update. So before, and what you see on the preview would be the old cluster here. It used to individually throw out four swords. Um, and it used to be really good for PvE as a decent pulling skill, but it fairly used that cluster in PvP. Now, what they changed it to is a massive barrage of swords in front of you. It says the exact same cancels um, as it does currently, and all the hits, the damage overall hasn't been changed, but it's done in a much more condensed time. Right? 
time frame. Also, the overall use of the skill in PvE is so much more significant, and it is worth noting that this is a tier 3 skill as well, so it benefits um, from that. And if you did land currently, if you did manage to get all four swords on one target, on current live stuff, it does chunk, um, does do quite a lot of damage. So now having it in this compressed time frame is going to be really a powerful skill for PvP. DK. So you say PvP damage for that's really good? Yeah, that's absolutely. Good. So that's really, um, I, th I think you also showed me a cancel. With, um... Yeah, so it cancels from a lot of skills. One of them is forward RT and just hold RT after. So it cancels like that. Um, so you can cancel the startup animation, and that's going to be really, really useful. There's other cancels like um, if you press down B, you can hold RT after. Now, obviously, that was done in the trailer, and then um, if you press LT, LB, and then hold RT when it's off board down. Um, so wait for seconds. So I've, um, LT, LB, and then press... Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. And then press RT. Um, are you mm. not... Have you not got... Spe have you used back to um, Dark Nebula? Mm, yeah, I think. So, left trigger, left bumper in Awakening. Mm-hmm. And it should do a spot might the one in green. Oh, it does really matter because it's the same cancel. But yeah, um, so it, it has quite it. a few. Yeah, it just might be bugged on labs then, not activating. Um, but yeah, as you can see, it, you can cancel the spot up, and it does do should do significant damage in PvP. Um, so that is one of the really really good changes. Um, so. so that skill is covered. I think there's uh, one skill left that's like really new to the Waken Kit. So. so one other significant change is Grip of Words. The AOE got bigger. It's got a PvE vacuum, which is LTB. Um, and the damage profile should be a lot better on the skill now, so it might be doing noteworthy damage instead of nothing at all, which is useful. And then other than that, the probably next biggest change is RB down, so this is pretty much the um, standard RB down skill that most classes get. It's a self heal. I think they added a bit more hits, but most noticeably they've increased the area and they've massively sped up the animation. And then on top of that, they switched the um, bound for forward guard. And they've put the bound on the core skill. Now this is going to be very useful in very high-end PvE grind zones. It's never really a PvP skill, um, but it should be useful in PvE, especially if you need to get a little bit of HP back. It should now actually have some form of it, so. um, hmm. which is decent. Now the only remaining awakening change is if you press sideways RT. And being able to use Shadow Bullet from Awakening is not only a quick transition back to pre-Awakening, it's also a range stiffness. So it's adding that little bit of um, range CC um, availability into the kit, which is nice. Yeah, that's that really pretty nice. much covers everything on an Awakening. That covers everything on an Awakening kit, so yep. we will probably see more Awakened changes because like, like the developers said, they will, they're they pumping out the classes right now. And then in November or probably also December, we will see more tweaks to the classes. And so this is not the finalized version of the Awakened DK kit. For sure, I think they will definitely do some changes to it. Um, but uh, this is just um, so we can get an idea of what they want to change. So we come to the pre-awakened kit now, not to suck itself. Uh, is there anything we can cover for like pre-awakening, passive or Lots and lots of stuff. Um, so a lot of the really, really strong changes to DKs in the pre-awakening. Now, DK as a whole has a really strong pre-awakening kit. Which is really, really good. Now, one of the biggest... Um, changes that's been a fairly long time repressed is you can now use her two dusks independently from each other so before you pretty much had to use the flow the second dusk acted purely as a flow to the first dusk and you had to do 
if the first desk was going to cool down, you had to do an unprotected desk before you get a second iframe from the um, flow of desk, chain desk, as it was called. Now they are mm -hmm. completely separate. So you can now do desk, do an attack, and have an iframe available to you, um, which is huge. Like, oh. exactly like that. So that's going to add so much survivability to DK as a especially to um, I would say especially success, but it just affects DK as a whole in such a massive way. It really affects survivability. Just having free access to that second desk, to that second recovery frame. Oh, that was the 100% oops. Yep. So that is just fundamentally huge. Um, really can't state how big of a change that is. So for um, movement, DK is definitely more with survivability with the split dusk. Yep, absolutely. That you can use. So really nice. Do we have something else that we can cover for Suck and Awakening? Uh, yeah, that's plenty. So um, now they've changed Lusa Snare, so you can actually use it a lot quicker now, and it's long. Which skill it was? That was the one near the bottom where you had to press sideways at me. And what was the it called again? You lacked out there. It was a trap. It was the trap skill. Oh yeah, the trap skill. Oh yeah, that's one yeah. of my favorite now. <laughs> <laughs> so it was actually stored in the trailer, and I must talk it as for this. It says for this. Listen, what it's actually doing? You do a sideways dusk, and then in the opposite direction, you're actually placing the trap. A part of real quick, you you are lagging out with your mic often. Oh, um, a little bit closer. Is this yeah. better? Um, yeah, so as you saw there, it places the lesser snare trap, and then someone can walk out for that, and it will detonate. And if they aren't protected or something, then obviously it can stun. It doesn't do any damage really, but it's a somewhat leave it, and you know so it can uh, catch people out. It's literally lingering CC that's on the ground. If someone steps over it and it's unsafe, you just you yeah. You're I wouldn't stuck. call it a lingering CC, but it's just a trap there that someone yeah. can walk over and detonate and get CC'd. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, it won't affect super armor, but it's still na it's now usable in one v ones, which is nice because it wasn't really usable in one v ones before. Yeah. Also, maybe for large scale, if you place it somewhere in the mm -hmm. choke. I can definitely mm -hmm. use it. Um, anything else we got for both kits? Oh yeah, there's plenty. Um, so this will affect both kits, but there's a third hit or flow skill on airstrike now. So if you hold down forward B, um, so you'll sort of do a teleport forward into a roundhouse slash. This probably, this to be honest, isn't really a great change, especially for success in DK, as there's not a lot of situations where we want to be this unprotected for this long. Um, it will pretty much only be useful if we know for facts we're getting the CC on that airstrike. But and I don't think, I don't know damage exactly until it gets to live servers, but I don't think it's going to be that great in terms of damage. What it does offer is a 20 DP debuff, which is nice. But other than that, it's fairly lackluster. And I don't see this being really use that effectively um, too much um, which is kind of sad but it is what it is hmm. um, maybe we will see some changes to that in the upcoming weeks if yeah it would be nice if it didn't just flow from airstrike but because it just flows from airstrike which you spend so long unprotected anyway it's, it's just a huge risk um, unless you like I said unless you know you get the CC alright the um, next thing Yep, so I think this is a fairly big positive change, but now when you do, they've reworked um, Repeated Annihilation so that it flows from Nocturne. So before Nocturne only had a forward and back input, now you can use sideways inputs to use Repeated Annihilation. And one of these inputs is actually a immediate CC, like a normal block jump. And this is gonna be a huge buff. So if you use Nocturne, um, which is left on your D-pad and then press right, you now get that immediate float. And that's going to be huge, yeah. um, especially for success in DK that can get into Nocturne much quicker than Awakening can. It's going to be a really useful poking CC. And you can also mix up still with the old Nocturne, which is forward 
um, which is also protected. So she now got an option of doing a protected debuff or doing a quick float. Um, and you can really play mind games with that. And either way, like you've seen it on Ninters, you've seen it on Has, this type of skill can be quite lethal in helping you get those CCs on your opponent. Um, yeah, so that's a huge positive change. To be like this Especially is this is uh, a useless skill. A, linger that was once a, useless skill. a lingering iframe into a, an unsafe CC is a little bit like ninjas, not as like ninja, but a little bit from the concept. Mm -hmm. It's really great. Like I think that will be really strong. Mm -hmm. That will be really, really strong. So DK actually got a proper block jump now, like one hundred percent. This is a proper block jump. That's really um, nice. Next thing for pre awakened So if you press LTX, this is now generally faster. Um, so Obsidian Acids is a bit faster, but what you can also do, it has a long cooldown, is you can press LT forward during the cast and C will dash forward. Um, again, this was shown in the trailer. And this applies to Succession as well. So um, what exactly needs to do? Uh, so need press LTX and then press LT forward. LT forward, not RT forward. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> I have three more seconds. Yeah, so that's... that adds a bit of protection to the cast. Um, it's obviously a bit of a gap close, and it's not overly useful in a rakening version um, because it does have a CC. It, uh, it is fairly okay filler for. Um, if you wanted to get a long range to fill it in, it's fairly decent for that. But um, the sped up animation and the forward dash you can get during the cast is nice. It's a nice change. Yeah, it definitely looks nice when way more mm -hmm. safe and faster now. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. Next thing for um, pre awakens. Or should we go to second session now? Oh, now there is one more pre awakening thing. So if you press. LTLB, this is now massively sped up with a bigger AOE. Um, LTLB. Oh, yeah. Left sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. I'm all. So that's now massively sped up. Uh, it used to have a really, really long cast, and obviously you saw quite it hit the mob from quite far away. So this is actually used to be really, really long before, um, so it wasn't very useful, but this is actually your pre awakening T3 skill as well. So it does add a bit of viability to using this skill, particularly in PvE and in combos, um, probably as a filler skill. It does have decent damage when it gets the hit, as it is currently. It doesn't get a damage buff at all in glabs, but it does do decent damage. It lacks crit rate, but it hits. But the number of hits and the PvP damage modifier makes it quite similar to Lunacy, just without any crit rate on it. So. Another thing to worth note with this skill, it's just about lunacy there, um, is the accuracy rate is actually 22%, which is really good. Um, From uh, Corrupted Ground, yeah. Corrupted Ground, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is actually now going to be a lot more viable. There's obviously risk because it's unprotected, um, but it's now going to be so much more useful, especially in PvE rare for success and because it's success and only tier 3 skill. Um, for skill add-ons, so that's worth noting. Um, and I think that pretty much sums up everything that's purely pre-awakening. Yeah, then we um, can move. Oh wait a second. Then we can move to succession. Um, from what I've seen so far, Palu, um, I think succession got more changes in this update. Am I correct there? Um, compared to awakening, yeah. I think success and benefits a lot more. But there is one minor thing I forgot in the pre-awakening, but we can cover it in the. Um, awakening part. I quickly expect those in the success and part. Yeah. So again, there's a fair bit here that just um, could have got changes and didn't get changes, but um. Yeah, we're just saying quickly skill everything. Yeah. All right, I think we're set up. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yep, so pretty much everything I just spoke about in the pre-awakening affects awakening or success and DK. So that's obviously very, very useful in that of itself. Now, I think the most notable things here is the changes to the 
size of the area of both Wheel of Fortune and Lunacy. Um, so that's LTB. And then Lunacy as well, you no longer need to quick slot to use it. It's now LTRT, which is a massive improvement. Yeah, the, the range on those skills mm -hmm. is insane, you know. I mean, it's even further than, like, if you stand a bit further back, it's even further. Like, that there. Uh, okay, maybe a bit closer. Uh, that was on. Let me actually lock this real quick. <laughs> so that's about the limit of the range on both the skills. They're about the same range. Um, so yeah, those are huge Aries, and I kind of wish they buffed the pre awakening Aries as well. Not to obviously the same extent, but just a little bit. But the Aerie in succession now is massive. Really, that's is really massive. massive yeah. Um, so obviously that's really strong. Um, now other, I think, success and only, I'm not sure whether this is just bugs, but if you do air strike and hold RT, you should be able to activate Nocturne. Nope. And maybe it has to be after the flow but it is Menson, you should be able to do it. So if you hold forward, if you hold forward F to do the third hit and then hold RT, I think. Is. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got the nocturne there now. Again, you have the same issue as what mentioned in pre raining. You're unprotected for so long. You're just better, especially in succession. You do air strike. You get the immediate flow, and then you cancel with dusk, and you're just better sticking to that than you are with any than doing that new function. Um, but it has. Well, I mean, it, it's a thing. Um, so. Other than that, if you hold um, RTRB to do, um, yeah, so the sec if you hold it down, the second and third hit is now quicker, um, so that's useful, especially since you go straight into the second hit when cancelling other skill, so if you do slanted and then do it, it's now generally quicker, so that's obviously very useful. Um, now, one thing I forgot about pre awakening is, it big, is, this is, is... It, is it big damage? Yeah, it's pretty really decent damage. Um, it's not as viable because you're it's competing against prime enforcement, but it's still good damage. And the fact they sped it up and increased the LRE, it's just a general useful change. Hmm, okay. um, so it's worth noting. You mentioned um, something you forgot for pre awakening? Yeah, so the forward dash Smoky Haze now no longer has a collision. Um, so if you press LT forward, you now go through players and mobs and so forth. So that's really is quite useful. Does not um, work in Awakening though. Yeah, I think it's bugged um, because it is purely the same skill. Um, so it should work in Awakening, but it's really, really useful. Because it allows you to get behind people quick, it allows you to get past mobs if you're chasing someone in grind zones and so forth. And you can, if you dash past someone's forward guard like that, you can quickly 180 into a slanted or an airstrike if you're feeling a bit more risky. Um, obviously, you do that with a very high camera turn speed, which you should have on DK, but um, yeah, my or if you're going to be like competitive on high end, um, but yeah. It's obviously very useful, and it actually falls into some of the other changes for DK. So one of the other changes for success in DK is some changes to Camus Sylvia Slash. So if you hold LTRB, you can now use Smoky Haze during it, so press forward. So obviously that doesn't have collision, so you can now dash forward and turn your camera 180 if you do it very quick, and it will turn the camera slash to hit behind. Um, the enemy to hit the enemy behind you, so that's obviously very useful. That's um, really useful. I mean, my, my camera speed is not high enough now to do those maneuvers, but yeah. I think it would be uh, like I think people will understand what you mean. Yeah, it's obviously something to get used to in terms of timing and everything, but um, other than that, um, they improved camera slash so that when you're doing the sideways dusk and smoky haze, it's no longer got a slight delay on the activation of the slash. So if you charge camera slash and press sideways, it's really quick activation. Um, so as it is currently, there's a slight delay coming out of Dusk into that into that um, CC, but now it's really quick. 
And again, like when I was saying, everything that in the pre awakening affects success and decay. So um, the split desks, for example, affects success and decay, which is obviously very huge on success and decay because you're using dusk to cancel your skills on synergy with your skills. Um, so having that second dusk, especially for success and decay, is incredibly powerful and incredibly useful for your survivability. Yeah. Um, one seems... of the other. Go ahead, sir. Sorry. One of the other changes around camera slash is if you do camera slash and then hold Y. Huh? So let it go and then hold Y. Oh. Um, so doing Twilight Bass from camera slash should now be quicker. Um, so it should allow you to get um, a bit more air attack hits from the knockdown CC. Um, it should be a bit quicker, but. I, I'm not too sure you're the, you're, uh, you know how fast Yeah, it should be a bit quicker um, because there is a fair bit play to it. Um, so that should be a small improvement. Other than that, um, if you combo into Lunacy from several skills, Camouflage being one of them, Lunacy should now be a bit quicker. Um, this is obviously very useful because it minimizes the gap at the start or just at what removes it because I think it was mostly desync anyway. Um, so stuff like that is very useful. Um, now, fundamentally, there isn't like much changes to success and um, the success and kit in and of itself. But I think what's important to keep in note is how some of the pre awakening changes affect success. And so if you do lunacy and then hold white trigger, you're now in Nocturne, which you can now do the instant float in. And that stuff like that is very strong. So um, you can basically be like a super high damage SA skill into the into your block jump. Yeah. And Which... one of the things to note is the range of Nocturne for the in succession is twenty three percent longer. Now I'm not sure how well this will translate over to console because Nocturne is generally a lot shorter on console because of the way the lock-on works on console. Um, so this is something I have brought up and hopefully they improve for the console build specifically, but on PC, Nocturne itself this has a fair decent range. Um, I mean, this is and decent it's now range. even longer. I mean, I stood yeah, over but, here and could see him. Yeah, but block my point is that it is sort of on console, um, Nocturne, um, it, which is an issue, a console-specific issue for Nocturne. Um, hopefully they fix that and mm, okay. I mean, they're increasing the range for success and versions so I really am hoping that gets fixed and addressed but it's worth noting um, oh. so yeah there's uh, a lot of really really good changes to DK and this pretty much covers everything um, I mean the only other thing noteworthy from Free awakening that affects success quite a bit. It's obviously if you do LTX and dash forward, um, the prime version of the sitting asses is do it as you cast it. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. It's obviously a much stronger skill. It has a bigger LRE, it's um, got a CC on it, um, and it's obviously much more damage. Um, so, obviously, that's a lot more stronger for the success version than it is for the awakening version or the absolute version. Um, so, yeah. Looks really nice in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that um, those changes will be enough to make DK super viable again? Um, I think we didn't see any really big number changes. Is there any skill where you think that needs more like damage or crazy number changes? Um, so, I mean, if you open up the skill, I don't. In terms of success and DK and pre awakening, I don't think damage is an issue that anyone can say um, success and DK has. The damage on success and DK is generally really, really high. Um, I would like to see a small damage buff to the prime version of Legacy, which is just below. I mean, it didn't receive any changes, and it has. It was obviously equal to the to the reckoning version on Tessens release, but it's fallen a bit behind because it's not had any buffs. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it's starting to be noticeably less damage and stuff like um, lunacy, but it's not a massive issue. Um, in terms of awakening, 
and pre-awakening there's still a lot of useless skills that i think needs to be addressed um in terms of pre-awakening you've got stuff like the deer's dogma that's been unchanged um um like just uh for to explain the deer's dogma i think that was um it's right at the bottom it was um, the steel here that's yeah. yeah yeah okay so this gives like a 20 percent damage buffed but all the skills it buffs are as useless and we've been pushing for like a rework on this for ages but they've ignored it. the same with imperious command just on the right um it does basically no damage we've been pushing for like he changes to this for ages it's still gone unaddressed i think one of the outstanding big issues on dk as well is he lacks self buffs one of which if you go up near the top is unveiling dagger it's a 10 percent attack speed buff that lasts for five seconds we've been pushing um We've been asking for an increased duration at the very least on this skill because it's a really, really useless buff to maintain, but it's a really, really painful to maintain because it's a five second duration on a three second cooldown skill. Mm. Um, so we've been putting for small improvements like this that hasn't come through yet. Um, there's also, they've not addressed like the gap so much. They have for success in, um, so the gap on Lunacy, if you do LT, RT, and then forward LT, if the forward dash. Oh, yeah, um, sorry. Yeah, no. I, so I think the gap there is a lot smaller, if not completely gone now, um, in the success in the first and only. It's gone. So you, yeah. see the sum, this, you see the symbol didn't flash there, which means it's the gone, gap yeah. at the end of Lunacy is actually not there. I'm not sure if it's the same case for Wheel of Fortune. Um, no, no. So they are still there for Wheel of Fortune. Yep, 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 but so in terms that. of Lunacy, thanks to it actually being um, a, having an input now that's not quick slot, and then the improvements to it sync it, um, it's now no longer got that gap at the end, which is obviously huge. Obviously, you most of the time you should be cancelling into Nocturne from Lunacy anyway for success in DK, but it's stuff worth noting. Um, just um, just for understanding, like what we mean with gaps, is there any if any if there's anyone that does not know what we mean, um, like those skills, lunacy and um, wheel of fortune have SA gaps at the end. That basically means, um, even though you should have SA in the skill, um, there is a like a split second where you can get CC before you can go on with the next skill. And uh, for lunacy, it was never super big. I think wheel of fortune was like more. Bigger was bigger and it's still there like at the end of this skill you could easily cc dk sort of that and i think it'd still be there you can see that even if you use an essay skill the symbol is flickering a bit so the gap is probably still there but for lunacy it got fixed mm -hmm. i mean there's been no like so obviously they're addressing some ish of like the gap issues but and they've not addressed in my opinion, the biggest issue, and this is kind of contested amongst DKs. A lot, most DKs, I think, agree that Dusk has a gap at the very start of it, and they've not addressed that at the moment, um, or in any way, shape, or form. So hopefully, they do so in the future, but we will see. Um, mm. I think Awakening kind of had the more lackluster um, chains in this because of the sheer amount of useless Awakening skills. Um, if you open up the skill menu like things like dusk hallucination which practically does nothing um which yeah, at the very it? top at, at the, the very top yeah. middle this skill pretty much only allows dusk to be used in awakening and that's it there's no change to dusk in any way shape or form um other characters like sork and has has this but it normally allows cancels um in association with this i mean like maybe we will with the new das so i was really hoping to get this replaced and it's just not been addressed. There's other useless skills like um, soul snats has not been like changed at all. This is pretty much completely useless. Um, and there's been a lot of like the AOE damage on shattering and flow bombardment does no damage. Um, so if you go to shattering, um, the sort of max 11 hits part where it says the magic damage max 11 hit that is actually the AOE of shattering darkness and it basically does very little damage like pretty much negative damage in both pve and pvp i was hoping that this would get a bit of a buff the chattering got a bit damage it's bro. actually got times one it's not got the max 11 hits there which is interesting yeah um, they in live person it's max 11 hits because 11 swords come down 
and they're all, all scattered about with they don't they don't have big ale ease themselves but they're all scattered about so it gives a sort of low damage and they change um, I mean, it could be yeah, a bug or they they did a change to it we have to see we can't really test it right now with people yeah there's nothing in the patch notes but this is what it is live but it just has the max 11 hits to represent that there are seven 11 max 11 hits to represent the 11 yeah. swords that fall down that each have separate areas and are completely separated and um, there's no overlap in those areas, so it doesn't do damage Really, um, so I was hoping stuff like that would get addressed. And what about legacy? Awaken... Uh, legacy didn't really get addressed. It got a better linkage at the end, so the gap at the end is now actually covered. So if you did legacy and you block, there's no gap there, um, which is really really nice. Uh, but it's the legacy itself didn't get changed. I don't think legacy in awakening the damage needs to be changed. With the AOEs getting bigger, it could probably do maybe a bigger LE, but other than that, like, legacy wasn't an issue. Um, mm -hmm. But there's, like, overall in Awakening DK, if you look purely at the Awakening kit, there's not a lot of CC moves. Um, you've pretty much got the Reigns float on Seed, and then the um, float on Spirit Blaze, which isn't that useful. Um, so, again, I think if they address some of the useless skills and look at um, the Ray... Um, he has some CCs. I think these are changes that need to happen. Um, Griff of Grud still remains fairly lackluster. Um, Trap of Idea is still a skill that has a limited AoE. It's pretty much covering where you start to where you go back. Um, having a big AoE on this, I think, is a change that could really be. It's really nice. needed and probably a sort of cooldown as well because it is pretty much just a backwards forward guard dash with an evasion debuff attached to it if they walk, if they're charging at you. Um, so I think that could do some improvements and stuff like that. But overall, um, I think there's a lot of work that still needs to be done for Awakening DK. But uh, I mean, you said some things. We will definitely put this in the feedback suggestion and people like can add their opinions to this. Is there anything for the... Uh, like you want to say as a close word kind of because our time is kind of nearly up um i mean i think that pretty much sums up i do think the changes overall were really good for dk um i think it's definitely a really really good start um and yeah hopefully we see more changes in the future and so um well oh. Yeah, thanks, Paolo, for this yeah, evaluation too. of the of the DK kit. And uh, I think if you guys have anything to say, you can put this in the comment section below. You can also write us on Discord or somewhere else if you have any like ideas to the kits. Um, we will try to get to to put the feedback to the devs so they actually, um, yeah, they actually um, hear our voices. And I will try to get like people for an interview for every class we work. I think that's way better when I like do it solo. So I have after, we have actually people that know how what to talk about. And um, with that being said, thanks, Paolo, for coming and joining. And um, thank you for having me. Yeah, obviously. Um, and thanks again. And with that being said, guys, we see us in the next video. And take care. See ya. See. You.